five minutes and we are done. Boy, was I wrong. A mess and it was bloody and it was almost like we were butchering this little baby goat. And you can see this baby goat, this beautiful black and white baby goat with all this blood kind of dripping there. But it was bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. And it burned an area where it started bleeding. But I'm telling you, it's like I cut an artery or something. It was bleeding profusely. We couldn't see a copper ring. We tried four times, two times on each horn. We couldn't see a copper ring. And uh, it was it just, we just didn't want to do it. And then I froze. <laughs> It is so embarrassing. It is so embarrassing that I'm sharing this with you. Let's talk about this budding nightmares. I'm telling you, this week it's gonna be a week of doubt in my life and changes in my life. So I'm gonna share them with you. I just budded um, kids for the first time, goat kids, of course. And this is my experience. Now, I started researching how to do a proper disc budding some time ago, really, a while ago. Um, I thought I had everything, you know, tool related, but also that I had it in me to do it. And when the time came to do our first baby goat, I thought I'd be doing the four of them. I gave them the, the shot for tetanus. It's here, the antitoxin, I guess. I shaved their heads. I had everything ready. I set up. I put it in a GFCI outlet. I think that's the name waited for my husband so one of us can hold the baby while the other one does it and then I froze <laughs> oh my gosh. it is so embarrassing it is so embarrassing that I'm sharing this with you but I'm gonna share it because I think that sometimes you see these videos where they disbud and it looks perfect like I was looking at watching Heather at Sage Stone Homestead which I'm sure you guys follow or come from there or you know you probably follow her channel but if you don't I'll have a link to her channel down below she is amazing and she is so confident in everything she does I really admire that from her but I'm telling you this I am not that person <laughs> my husband sits down you know on this chair when we picked up Dom um, the breeder husband um, he kind of told us, you know, you put them here on your leg, front legs here, you kind of close your legs, hold them, and then the bottom ones you just hold like this, and blah, 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 do you do this, blah, 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 simple. I thought, five minutes and we are done. Boy, was I wrong. I decided that I was gonna hold the baby goat in place. But we never grabbed his muscle, and he started moving. The second time we were going to do the ring, like it was almost impossible. I'm telling you, maybe the pressure was not enough. We couldn't see a copper ring. We tried four times, two times on each horn. We couldn't see a copper ring. And uh, it was... It just We just didn't want to do it. My husband and I were in tears <laughs> doing this to this little boy. I mean, you just can't even imagine my husband in tears because we were doing this to a baby goat. Um, <laughs> anyways, that was the most traumatic one, so I'm gonna go through it. We put him there, we do the second time. We were planning to do the eight so they don't get scars, but this baby goat moved in a way that went like this, and the in the ironing instead of going over the, the where we were doing the ring it kind of moved towards the back and it burned an area where it started bleeding but I'm telling you it's like I cut an artery or something it was bleeding profusely and I didn't have what I needed to stop the bleeding now at this point I was freaking out my husband was freaking out we were like he had to leave for a second because he couldn't take it <laughs> I was like, what 
am I gonna do? I need to cauterize this, right? So I was cauterizing it, but the part that was bleeding was the part that was on top and it was mostly skin. It wasn't really anything else, but it was bleeding, 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 bleeding. And you can see this baby goat, this beautiful black and white baby goat with all this blood kind of dripping there. I was trying to do everything, but I couldn't. I didn't have anything to dry the, the, the blood with. I didn't, so I'm like, Come on side, take this baby goat, hold it while I go to uh, the hot spot to try to find out where I can use to stop the bleeding. Now, I didn't think about putting pressure. I should have done that in the beginning. I didn't think about that. So I grabbed some gauze, I dried it, went to do that. And when I came back, it said, uh, what's it called? Cornstarch. So I go and put a bunch of cornstarch on that. And it wouldn't stop bleeding. It would continue. And then I go back to the same article that I read. And it said, put pressure. Which I didn't do. So I didn't put pressure. And it was a mess. And it was bloody. And it was almost like we were butchering this little baby goat. Okay? Now, I know a lot of people are going to um, get upset about this. Believe me. I was upset. I'm still upset at myself. Because I let that happen. It was an accident. Nobody planned it. He just moved in a way. We didn't think he was able to move that way because of the way that we were holding him but now we learn we need to grab his muscle as we burn because that's how they move and that's how you can hurt them it could have been a lot worse we you know there's an eye nearby it could have been a lot worse but at that point I didn't care that it could have been worse I was crying and crying and crying and I'm sure all my neighbors were aware of what was happening even though they're very far away because it was like baby goat screaming and me freaking out all at the same time now after that um, I read the pressure so I put pressure we took him in I left him with us in the kitchen for 10 to 15 minutes until everything kind of dried up and so because I was thinking well if I take him like that and he removes the with his leg he scratches and removes the the cornstarch <laughs> it's going to start bleeding again I won't be able to see it this was in the afternoon they were gonna go to bed which is the best time to do it in my opinion the this pudding and the banding because then they just chill with their mom inside but anyway so I do all that I end up stopping putting inside he was fine he was you know quiet but he was still okay I put him with mocha mocha immediately kind of licked off the baking not the baking powder the cornstarch and but it wasn't bleeding or anything like that but it looks horrible it looks horrible it looks like you, uh, we were trying to do like a bigger hole it's, oof, oh, it looks bad anyways the next day i'm like let me do it you hold him make sure he doesn't move and i'll do it and by instinct i grabbed his muscle i didn't read or anything but i did it myself now it was traumatizing i didn't know how much pressure to put maybe not put so much pressure it says that you barely put the the, the weight of the iron and you press a little bit but what is a little bit there, this is not an exact science so it was hard to do it myself. Um, there was, was the second. Today is the day of the third goat. I'm doing one a day because of how traumatized I am. And listen, I'm being selfish here. And I'm admittedly being selfish here. Like, I was thinking while I was doing that, well, maybe $250, $260 is worth taking them to the vet and get them done. But after my bad experience and all of the baby goats growing skirts, like the boys growing, I thought to myself, why am I going to pay that much for a job that is not well done? Right? That's what I thought. So that's why I decided and I kept reminding myself, it's not about the money. It's not about somebody else doing it. If you want a disbudded goat, then you have to have the guts to do it yourself. For me, I'm not saying you should. Or anybody else should I'm saying that I that is my standard for myself so it is not fair for me to take it to somebody else to do it for me just in order to save me from the sadness and this the, the fear of doing it myself but let them go through the process anyways you know what I mean 
if I am so concerned of poor baby goats that they have to go through this or that, then I wouldn't do it. You know, that's that's my premise. That's that's where I'm standing on right now. Why? I mean, why is it okay for somebody else to do it for me and I can't do it myself if I feel like it's such a horrific thing, which is not. Now, before I did this putting, I did the shaving and the tetanus shot. So, and that shot lasts a day, so I'm still good if I do one go a day. But um, what I wanted to get at is that I could feel the buds, but I couldn't see the horns. They were not sticking out yet not even the tip so when I was shaving them I shaved them too close and one of the buds started bleeding because it's still skin since it hasn't broken the skin still skin so um, I cut a little one over here of course I cleaned the wound and I then cauterize it with the iron but that's something you should know uh, if they don't have already them sticking out what you're seeing there is just skin. So as you shave them, you can cut them. So just be careful with that. Now, as I was talking to somebody uh, with the breeder from Dom's farm, he was explaining that basically where, what you're trying to kill is something that is like a cuticle that is around the, the horn. So you don't really have to go too deep like some people do. You just have to burn enough of that circle so it won't start to grow now bugs do grow more scars because theirs have they have glands in the center so you have the rings and right here in the center they um they have some glands there that can grow scars so i have to keep an eye on it because i didn't do the figure eight i didn't do it because of myself <laughs> because i couldn't bear doing keep doing it now that's dom he's looking at me and he's like it's time for my milk so I'm gonna get going, but that was my experience. I'm still going through it. I still have a couple more boys, and I'll share that with you probably in another snippet of uh, a video, or I'll add a snippet in a video. I don't know. And I'll share that. I don't know if you can see, but I had to disband them again because the first time the copper ring was not really noticeable. And honestly, I was kind of afraid of the pressure I needed to put in. So I had to disbud them yesterday again. It's been, it's been, it's been tough. It's, it's been a process. And um, I don't know, again, some people think that because you have a farm, you should be tough in certain situations you should be able to butcher you should be able to this but you should be able to give shots you should be able and yes for the most part you should be right but that doesn't mean that everyone is and that doesn't mean that it comes naturally to everyone and that doesn't mean that if you're not doing it or if you're crying while you do it or if you are upset when you have to do it that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Even though I want to tell myself that I'm the problem and that I'm the one that is not strong enough to do what everyone else is doing and not complaining about. So, if you're new around here, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and hit the notification bell. So every afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Fridays, I upload a new video, and I am there in the chat. So if you want to ask me a question, say something like, Live, um, have a little conversation in the chat while the video is premiering I'm there so if the video is 20 minutes I will be there from 3 to 320 if it's 10 minutes just for 10 minutes so please come to the premiere say hi and look for the chat because some people don't see it thanks again for being here I hope that I was helpful that you learned something or at least I embarrassed myself in front of the entire world I'll talk to you guys next time bye guys